Hello and welcome to the first of the Navigator videos. So I guess the main question is, what is the Navigator and what can it do for me? The Navigator is a toolbar that sits down the side of your uh, main document as you're working and it can give you loads of feedback about your book and you can also obviously use it to navigate through your document. But not only that, you can use it to create things on the back end of your book. Now, when I speak about the back end, I'm talking about things like characters, location, timeline entries, comments, and so on. The Navigator is a, an incredible tool for doing this. So with all that said, let's jump in and take a look at the Navigator. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, all I've done is created a blank project called Navigator. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually open the Navigator, which is done with this icon, the one that looks like a compass, and you simply click on it. Uh, obviously, uh, the creators of Papyrus Author are continuously refining the software, and since this video was made, they've added a menu called Author. So if you go to the author menu, you can now also open Navigator from there. Now you can resize uh, the Navigator to as wide or as narrow as you want. I'm going to leave it relatively wide just to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Now, the Navigator and Document are completely interactive. So whatever you create in the document will instantly appear in the Navigator and vice versa. So for instance, if I want to create a scene for chapter one and I want to do it from the Navigator, I would right click on the chapter and I would go new scene. And I'll put something here like um, it all starts here. Okay, and then obviously you would insert your scene text here. Um, if I wanted then to um, insert a chapter after this entire scene or chapter, the first thing I would do is insert a page break. Now you don't have to insert a page break for ebooks, but you do for paperbacks. So again, creating a chapter um, from within the navigator, I would right click on the previous chapter, come down to new chapter before or after. So obviously if I click this, it will put the chapter before, but I want it after and I click and you get chapter two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm now gonna hit enter and I'm gonna now do things in reverse. So if I wanted to create a new scene from within the document, I would right click, go scene, and again it creates the scene. And here, it, um, I don't know, okay, I'm going to insert another page break and I'm going to create a chapter again, but this time from within the document and you'll see it appear here. So to do that, I would right click, I come down to change headings and I would go to new chapter before. And as you can see, that creates the new chapter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause and I'm going to propagate these three um, chapters with some text to fill it out and I'll show you um, how comments and other things interact. So I'm just going to pause. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back and what I've done is basically copied in three chapters worth of text from one of my works in progress and attached this project to its um, character database as well. So the first thing I'm going to show is obviously you can now navigate through your text simply by clicking on the heading inside the navigator. Not only that, you can reposition chapters by dragging and dropping within the navigator. Now, as long as your heading, the heading you used uh, is a numbering heading, in other words, it has automatic numbering attached to it. When you move your chapter, so if I move chapter two to where chapter one used to be, it will automatically renumber, okay? Now by default, most headings do automatically, globally have that automatic renumbering attached. So again, if I drag two to where number one is, and I go back to number one, you can see it's moved that chapter. I'll now expand all of these entries, and I'll explain what everything is. Okay, so, Obviously, these are the scenes, and again, you can navigate through your work in progress by clicking on 
uh, either chapters, comments, uh, scenes, anything that's mentioned or shown in this uh, navigator. If you click on it, it will take you to it. You can also reposition uh, scenes in the same ways as chapters. So you can drag and drop those around and it will move all the text, comments, timeline entries, everything attached to that scene or chapter will move when you drag and drop it. Now, unlike chapters, if you, um, you know, like when I showed you in the previous part of the video, I gave the, um, the scenes more of a descriptive title. If you just went scene one, scene two, for instance, it won't renumber them. So uh, that's just something to bear in mind. Now, again, if I decide, for instance, if I'm on uh, this uh, scene here in chapter three and I decide to add a comment, which is right click comment you instantly see it appear and again if I type on it it appears instantly in that scene okay another thing that is part of um, the navigator is the info columns which you toggle on here now from the info columns at the moment there's only uh, five headings or five tabs there so in the next video I'm going to show you how to turn on more options for the navigator but dependent on how many of those options are turned on will denote how many tabs are here so notes is obvious um, if I click on here and I wanted to add a note it will instantly appear and again if I click on this note or um, this is an abstract if I click on it you see it immediately appears in the um, info columns. So the info columns are used to create notes, research entries, abstract. Well, I tend to use that for synopsis, like synopses, but you can use them for whatever you want. Characters, it will list off all the characters that are shown in any particular chapter or scene that are, is highlighted, but you can also use it to create new characters. Same goes for timelines. If I click um, on each one of these things it will tell me the timeline entry and again you can use the info columns to create timelines if I close the info columns now and click on something that's relating to the info columns it will open it and take you straight to that entry in the info columns okay one more thing I'll show you is you can see this is global sources and this is global sources for research. So this would be global sources uh, research for the entire book, whereas you can have research allocated to a chapter or scene just as in the same way as in notes. If you wanted global notes to initiate that, you would go to insert and you would go to global notes. And that instantly appears there. And again, global notes would be notes relevant to the entire book rather than to the individual chapter or scene. Okay, so there you have it. That was the first of the Navigator videos. It was just the basics. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can modify its appearance and add more details and information into it. So until next time, see you later.